Brahma said, O Brahmana, foremost among the celestial beings, you have inquired into a good matter, rendering service to the worlds and desiring their benefit. I shall explain to you the wholesome and salutary principles of Shiva, on hearing which the various sins of the people are destroyed. Neither the principles of Shiva nor his supreme wonderful forms have been understood by me or by Vishnu or by anyone else. At the time of great dissolution, when all the mobile and immobile objects of the world are dissolved, everything gets enveloped in darkness, without the sun, planets, and stars. There is no moon. The day and the night are not demarcated. There is no fire, no wind, no earth, and no water. There is no unmanifest primordial being. The whole firmament is one complete void, devoid of all elements. There is no dharma or adharma, no sound, no touch. Smell and color are unmanifest. There is no taste. The face of the quarters is not demarcated. Thus, when there is pitch darkness that cannot be pierced with a needle, and what is mentioned in the Vedas as the existent and the Brahman is alone present. When the present visible world is not in existence, the Sat Brahman alone is present, which yogins observe perpetually in the inner soul, the inner firmament. It is incomprehensible to the mind. It cannot at all be expressed by words. It has neither name nor color. It is neither thick nor thin. It is neither short nor long. It is neither light nor heavy. There is neither increase nor decrease in it. The Veda says that it envelops whatever is in a surprising way. It is the splendor, the truth, the knowledge, the eternal, and the great bliss. It is immeasurable, without support, changeless, formless, attributeless, perceptible to the yogins, all-pervasive and the sole cause of the universe. It is free from alternatives. It has no beginning. It is free from illusion and its harassment. It has no second. It has neither beginning nor end. It has no development. It is in the form of pure knowledge. People have doubts about giving it a name. Then, after some time, that being, it is said, wished for a second. The being, having no form of its own, wished to create an auspicious form of its own endowed with all power, qualities, and knowledge. A form that goes everywhere, that has all forms, that sees all, that is the cause of all, that should be respected by all, that is at the beginning of all, that bestows everything and that sanctifies everything, should be created. So it wished, and hence created that form of Ishwara, of pure nature. The original being without a second, with neither beginning nor end, that illuminates everything, that is in the form of Chit, pure knowledge, that which is termed the Supreme Brahman, the all-pervasive and undecaying, vanish. The manifest form of the formless being is Sadashiva. Sages of ancient and succeeding ages have sung of it as Ishwara. Ishwara, though alone, then created the physical form Shakti from his body. This Shakti did not affect his body in any way. This Shakti is called by various names, Pradhan, Prakriti, Maya, Gunavati, Ara, the mother of Buddhitattva, cosmic intelligence, Vikrivarjita, without modification. That Shakti is Ambika, Prakriti, and the goddess of all. She is the prime cause and the mother of the three deities. She has eight arms. Her face wears a peculiar splendor, the splendor of a thousand moons. 
Thousands of stars perpetually sparkle round her face. She is bedecked in various ornaments. She has various weapons. She is capable of various movements. Her eyes beam like a full-blown lotus. She has a brilliance that can hardly be conceived. She is the generating cause of all. She sprang up singly as Maya. In her union, she manifested in various forms. The Supreme Purusha is Shiva. He is called Shambhu. He has no other lord over him. He holds the Mandakini, Ganga, on his head and the crescent moon on his forehead. He has three eyes. He has five faces. He is always joyful. He has ten arms. He holds the trident. He is as pure and white as camphor. His body is entirely dusted with ashes. That Brahman in the form of Kala, time, together with Shakti, simultaneously created the holy center called Shiva Loka. The same is called Kashika, the excellent holy center. It is the seat of salvation, shining over and above everything. The holy center is of the nature of extreme bliss, inasmuch as the primordial lovers, supremely blissful, made that beautiful holy center their perpetual abode. O sage, even at the time of great dissolution, that holy center is never free from Shiva and Shiva, Shakti. Hence, it is called Avimukta. Since the holy center is the cause of bliss, the Pinaka bearing Lord Shiva called it Anandavan, blissful forest, and later Avimukta. O celestial sage, it is said the two blissful deities, thus sporting in the forest, wished for another being to be created. Shiva thought within himself like this, Another being shall be created by me. Let him create everything, protect it, and in the end let him dissolve it with my blessing. Having entrusted everything to him, we too, remaining in Kashi, shall roam as we please, keeping only the prerogative of conferring salvation. We can stay happily in this blissful forest, being free from worries of creation. With the consent of Shiva, the Supreme Lord spread the liquorine essence of nectar on his left side, on the tenth limb, nectar that was the outcome of churning the ocean of his mind, wherein thoughts were the waves, the sattva guna was the precious gem, rajas being coral and tamas the crocodile, Thereupon a person came into being who was the most charming one in the three worlds, who was calm with Sattva Guna being prominent, and who appeared to be the ocean of immeasurable majesty. O sage, he was endowed with patience. There was no one comparable to him. He had the luster of sapphire. He was glorious, with his excellent eyes shining like a lotus. He had a golden form and features. He wore two excellent silk garments of golden color. His arms were browny and brilliant. He was indefatigable. He bowed to Shiva, Parameshwara, and said, O oh Lord, give me names and assign me my task. On hearing it, Lord Shiva laughed. With words thunder-like in resonance, Lord Shiva addressed the person thus. Shiva said, You will be famous as Vishnu by name, as you are all pervasive. You will have many other names conferring happiness on the devotees. Perform penance highly conducive to the achievement of the matter in hand. Be firm in it. Saying so, the Lord bestowed on him the Vedas through his nostrils. Shiva, accompanied by Shakti and his attendants, vanished. After due obeisance to Shiva, Vishnu began his great penance. Even after performing the penance for twelve thousand divine years, Vishnu could not achieve his desire, the vision of Shiva that confers everything. 
He became suspicious and respectfully meditating on Shiva, pondered, what shall I do now? In the meantime, the auspicious voice of Shiva was heard. Perform penance again for removing your doubts. On hearing it, Vishnu performed a terrible penance for a long time, following the path of meditation. That being, Vishnu, became enlightened, following the path of meditation. He was delightfully surprised. Oh, what is that true entity? From the body of Vishnu who thus exerted himself, water currents of various sorts began to flow as a result of Shiva's maya. O oh, great sage, the supreme Brahman in the form of divine waters pervaded the entire world. A mere contact with the same is destructive of sins. Vishnu, the weary person, went to sleep amidst the waters. He was in that blissful state of delusion for a long time. As approved in the Vedas, his name came to be established as Narayana, having water as his abode. Excepting for that primordial being, there was nothing then. In the meantime, the tattvas, principles, too, were evolved out of the great soul. O wise one of great intellect, listen to my enumeration of the same. From Prakriti came into being the Mahat, cosmic intellect. From Mahat, the three gunas. Ahankar, the cosmic ego, arose therefrom in three forms according to the three gunas. The essences, the five elements, the senses of knowledge and action, too, came into being then. O most excellent of sages, I have thus enumerated the principles. All these principles originating from Prakriti are insentient, but not the Purusha. These principles are twenty-four in number. Vishnu, the Purusha, accepted all these as the will of Shiva and began his sleep in Brahman.